Switching from iPhone to Android is more than just a new phone. I created a powerful private ecosystem for free by connecting my Android to a custom Linux desktop rivaling Apple's walled garden. In this video, I'll show you how. My previous attempts to switch to Android always ended with me returning to an iPhone. However, my successful transition to a custom Linux PC has shown me it's possible, and now I'm ready to make the switch from Apple permanent. First, let's talk about what you give up when you switch from iPhone to Android. The usual suspects, iMessage and FaceTime, are often the biggest hurdles for people. Honestly, that wasn't a problem for me with RCS improving cross-platform messaging and the fact that I don't use FaceTime or have critical iMessage group chats, the transition was really smooth. Similarly, Apple's continuity is only useful if you're all in on their ecosystem. Since I switched from a Mac to a Linux PC, that benefit disappeared. I even found a solid AirDrop replacement, which I'll share later. My apps were another non-issue. Everything I use daily on iOS is available on Android and works perfectly. The only thing I thought I'd miss was my Apple Watch, but the Google Pixel Watch 3 has proven to be a fantastic alternative, matching closely on all of the features and accuracy that I also had with Apple Watch and my iPhone. The final challenge were our shared Apple family card and Find My, which is a pain to manage the Apple card online. My solution was to move the kids to a shared Amex card, which simplified things immensely. And we now use Life360 over Find My, which offers even more useful features, especially with the oldest driving now. So what did I gain? Android offers true customization, not just light or dark apps and now, well, clear apps. I have more powerful widgets, the freedom to set any app as my default, and the ability to install open source software. This gives me more control and opens the door to a huge variety of innovative hardware and powerful integrated AI features that are significantly ahead of where Apple is currently. All right, let's get to the core of how I ditched Apple's walled garden without losing the convenience. The key is creating a powerful link between my Android phone and Linux desktop. For that, we'll use an application called KDE Connect. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set this up. This can be done on really any Android phone, and I've used this with a Pixel 9 Pro XL running Android 16 beta, a Nothing Phone 3A running Nothing OS, and a Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra running One UI. First, we'll install KDE Connect on the Linux PC. You could do this by opening the software manager on Linux Mint. In the search bar, type KDE Connect. Click on the search result and then click install. Alternatively, you can also open a terminal window, which is what I'll do here, and type sudo apt install KDE Connect. Next, install KDE Connect on your Android phone. On your Android phone, open the Google Play Store and search KDE Connect. If you're using F-Droid, for example, for your open source app store, you can also install KDE Connect by searching for KDE Connect in F-Droid. Tap install to download the app onto the phone. Now we'll connect both devices. Ensure both your Linux PC and your Android phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. This is essential for them to find each other. Open KDE Connect on your computer and on your phone. On your phone, you should see the name of your Linux PC. It'll appear under Available Devices. Tap on your computer's name and then tap the blue Request Pairing button. Accept the connection. A notification will appear on your Linux desktop asking you to accept the pairing request from your phone. Click Accept and your devices are now connected. Configure the permissions and plugins on your phone, KDE Connect will ask you to grant permission to different features. Tap plugin settings to see a list of all available functions like notification sync, file sharing, and media control. Go through the list and grant permissions for the features you want to use. This is what unlocks the powerful ecosystem feature, so be sure to enable everything you need. And it gets even better. One of the simplest, most underrated features is direct file access. Unlike other ecosystems that require specific apps, I can just plug my Android phone into my Linux PC. It shows up instantly, letting me drag and drop files like photos and music as if it were a regular flash drive, for example. But if you're an Android power user like me, you'll love this next part. Android has a built-in feature called the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB. On Linux, you can unlock its full potential with a single command in the terminal, sudo apt install adb. This gives you an incredible amount of control, making things like installing apps from outside the Play Store or tinkering with developer settings incredibly simple and efficient. So what about replacing those tightly integrated Apple apps, especially if you don't want to go the KDE Connect route? I've found that Google's ecosystem fills that gap perfectly on my Linux setup. For messaging, Google Messages for Web has become my new iMessage, letting me seamlessly send and receive text from my computer. 
While my digital life now runs on Google Drive, I haven't completely cut ties. I can still log into iCloud.com anytime I need to access something from my Apple account. As for productivity, I've been a longtime user of Google Docs and Slides, so I don't miss pages or keynotes at all from Apple. The transition on the software side has been practically seamless. The true magic of switching from iPhone to Android is unlocked when you pair it with a Linux desktop. It's a move away from restrictive corporate ecosystems and into an open world where tools like KDE Connect empower you to build a private, seamless environment that is entirely your own. For me, the control and flexibility I've gained have been incredible. I know the idea of switching can seem daunting, but it's easier now than ever before. Android has made massive leaps, and it's a shame that many still view it through a lens from years ago, defaulting to the latest iPhone without exploring what's out there. My advice? Give it a shot. You might discover that the freedom on the other side is exactly what you've been looking for. What's holding you up from making the switch? Have you also made the jump? Have any specific questions on anything I covered or anything I may not have addressed? Drop a comment. I look forward to the discussions. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe.